Hi, I'm Lauren. And I'm Christina. And this is our podcast, Let's, Let's Shoot the, the Fat. Fat. Hello. Hi. Welcome to another episode of Let's Shoot the Fat. You know, now I might start <laughs> saying it in every podcast. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if it catches on. <laughs> Today, we're going to do an assumptions tag. We ask on Instagram for people to send in their assumptions about us, about international students in general, about international students' lives. And we're going to respond. But first, weekly recap. Let's go. Let's go. So, I was working on the weekend. We were also studying somehow. And then during the week... <laughs> somehow we made it all somehow. work. And then, I mean, basically during the whole week, we were just studying, doing exams. We had one exam on Tuesday. Yes. Which was Research Methods or Research Methodologies for Journalism. <laughs> the whole title of the class and then on thursday we had newspaper design right yeah i mean that pretty much sums up <laughs> our lives at this point yeah i mean we can sum up quickly like a routine of the day we had when right. we were studying but yeah I, maybe we said it last week i can't remember no i mean we didn't really have that routine yet i feel like i mean last week we were kind of just both cop well what we do is <laughs> we at least this time around, I feel like we both kind of took this approach of looking at all the slideshows, all the all the documents we have on our like Aula Global, our mm -hmm. online platform from the university, and copying it in like written notes, and then learning off of those written notes. Then we would like Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we would kind of go through them together. We would ask each other because it's a lot of memorizing this time mm -hmm. around. So we would ask each other, "Tell me about." The color theory. <laughs> and then... And I was we, like, we, well, I would love to. But, but I, don't I know nothing. nothing. <laughs> and that's kind of how we learned. And I feel like I feel like it's good for these types of classes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to say what helped us the most was actually like asking each other mm -hmm. questions and be like, tell me about this. Because then you start like... Again, we have a great word in <laughs> Czech. Like... Um, digging through your brain to like get this information and then you start like connecting things and then what we did a lot was like say kind of these like funny things or like abbreviations or you know something that we would memorize it by and then you like kind of during the exam try, that yeah, comes to your to mind remember, remember that so I think that's how we learned the most yeah because with these types of classes too like a lot of it is quote-unquote common sense like it's the exact like mm -hmm. type of exam where you would read through your notes and be like ah, i know this this makes sense this is perfectly like reasonable but then when you do have to like recall it by memory you're like wait i know nothing actually yeah so that's why this way was good yeah yeah so that's been our life but like what i was I feel like now it's better because we're actually like halfway through, mm -hmm. you know, we have the one part one week behind us. Now it's just one more. But like before that, I was like, Ugh, we're going to have to go through this all over again because we have a like very precise routine where first I just write down the notes from presentations and then we like read it together and then we go through it and ask each other questions. And then, you know, we went through all of this, we went through the exams, and they're like, oh, okay, I'm done with this. But then you have to do it all yeah. over again. But it's fine, because now I know it's like the, it's just twice. You know, if it was like five times, five times, I think it would be horrible. But like now, yeah. it's like split into two weeks, so we do it only twice. Yeah. In the middle of this past week, we had a bit of a low point, because... I think after the research exam, like we had one day to then study and prepare for the other exam too. And we were very unmotivated because we're like, this is just over and over and over again. But now I feel like we're through it enough that we can see the end of it maybe a little bit. Yes. We um, were also just tired. We also can't sleep anymore. I It's super weird. I just, at this point, I just gave up and I think it must be. Because my body is somehow like adjusting to summertime. And since it's literally still light outside at 10 p.m. Right, that's like, true. My brain doesn't think that we're supposed to go to sleep. Maybe. Because so, like both of us all of a sudden literally can't fall asleep anymore. Like I'm not, that's the thing. I'm not tired. Like I don't mm. yawn. 
at 8 p.m., which I would usually no. do, and like get to bed after 9, 9 30 to go to sleep at 10. And now, like I was studying yesterday until 10, I still wasn't tired. So I was like, I might as well continue studying because I know that I'm just going to lay in my bed no. and be on my phone because I won't be able to fall asleep. I am exhausted in the morning, though, which is weird to me mm. because, like, if you're not tired and laying, like, yeah, I I know you're not that much, but like me, yeah. it takes a lot for me to wake up yeah. in the morning, which is why I would like to fall asleep earlier. Yeah, personally, but I mean, as long well, again, it might be because we don't move our bodies a lot. Because, yeah, that's what my like, sister was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now I really like notice this because, like, yeah, we went to the exam, but like all the other days, we we're just at home sitting not doing much and it's a lot of brain work but not yeah. a lot of physical work yeah. so my brain might be like a bit exhausted from studying but my body's like wait a second yeah. we haven't even left the apartment i'm gonna try to go for walks that might be because good. that was my plan but somehow like late it was just like i didn't have time but even that i mean obviously it's great if we do that but what i mean is that even if we go out for like an hour long walk it's still not gonna like substitute all the movement that we do on no. daily basis like no when we're not in exam season, you know? So I no. think that's why. I mean, as long as I function with going to sleep at midnight and waking up at 7, 8, because yeah. I still do wake up early. That's the no, thing. Me not. And like, But the thing is, I'm only tired when I wake up. During the rest of the day, then I'm fine. Okay. So I guess so it's okay. Good. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, as long as my body thinks that this is good for me, then <laughs> Let's do I'll it. accept it. I'll do it. Yeah, and then we had the two exams, which went okay. Probably the second one I don't want to talk about. It evokes a lot of self-hatred in me, but it's okay. And then we did also do something fun, mm -hmm. which was... We went to paint pottery yeah. again, and it was so much fun. You know, I was less stressed this time around. Me because, too. Like, I already knew the whole process, you know? What process? Like how everything works and because we've been there before you know before we we're like oh this is so new like what are we gonna do how are we gonna do it? right blah, 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 right blah. right but now we even had the same table yeah <laughs> we did time. it really just it felt like the exact same yeah. experience again but i have to say i am obsessed with this activity it's such and this a place nice specifically yeah like they're doing it so well i mean besides the reservation part they could do like an online system but it's fine it's okay we'll call <laughs> <laughs> but it's such like nice experience where you can be with your friends like the whole tea part of it the where you atmosphere. can drink tea or coffee it's for yeah free. the music and you only pay like you pay for whatever pottery piece of pottery mm -hmm. you choose to paint so yeah. like depending on you know how complicated it is to make it how big it is it'll cost a bit more but that's all you pay so like for me for instance i made a little plate which cost 10 euros so the entire experience, two and a half hours of mm -hmm. painting there with tea, with coffee, with all of the paint. Like they have so many different um, things that you can use to like create your yeah. create your thing. And all of that for 10 euros. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's really great. And I'm really happy we went. So like, you know, at the end of semester, we have a nice activity together before we go again mm -hmm. for the summer. And it was nice to like reward ourselves a little bit for for the exams or for the studying to like break up the routine yeah. a little bit yeah and i mean yesterday for me at least it consisted of a lot of stress a lot of you know i almost cried like when you left to go grocery shopping i i was falling apart because the university is stressing me out because i got an email from my internship company that i like got the position i got another like opportunity to do like a week-long course and I was like this is great like finally it happened but now like to do it to process it through university is a horrible horrible experience let me tell you and I don't know because I want to like invalidate it for credits and it's a whole thing it's horrible so I almost fell apart yesterday that and it's a lot like the worst thing is that I know that I can't like I don't have time for this like i have to study you know like literally yesterday i started studying at like 3 three forty, maybe even at 4 because the whole morning or the whole like first half of the day i just kept writing emails to a bunch of people at least i mean at least somebody replied but then they said oh you have to message these people so then i message other people and it's just a whole like sometimes it's worse if they reply fast because like you get <laughs> yeah. the email done with yeah. and then 
yeah it's all over but again. i mean i have to say it makes me excited for like the internship i mean it terrifies me to be honest but Absolutely i think it's gonna be amazing me. i hope so because yeah. I'm like, what am I going to do in the Christina's company Christina's summer is wild, by the way. <laughs> and you know <laughs> Just what? Just putting it out there. <laughs> I talked to my sister yesterday, uh, my younger sister, and she works in the Italian restaurant. And she was like, oh, my mom came here to like surprise me. Like I came to work and she was already there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, she stood out to me a lot too, <laughs> <laughs> which is really cute. Because it that. like brightens your yeah. day at work. Um, and then she was like talking to the manager or the owner or whatever. I don't know. And then she was like, yeah, yeah, my other daughter could, like, work here, too. And I was like, Didn't um, you already when? get you a job at another cafe? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm like, mom, like, how many hours in a day do you think Maybe send your is? mom your schedule. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. No, it's I wild. Yeah. It's insane. But it's, it's going to be good. It's all going to start in a week. <laughs> blows yeah. my mind she realized that yesterday <laughs> she's like oh you know the job's gonna start in two weeks so i was like christina which two weeks yet again you know remember with the exams where i was like oh, yeah. they started in a month and a half <laughs> and they started in two weeks uh, yeah. well, the concept of time <laughs> i don't get it i don't get it yeah but that's that that's okay. our life at the moment <laughs> now let's move on to your assumptions yes All right, for the main part of this episode, for this topic, we thought that we could do assumptions about us because we wanted to do another Q&A, but then I got the idea. I was listening to another podcast episode and I was thinking, oh, maybe we could do like assumptions about international students in general because I feel like there are a lot. We had a lot. Yeah, yeah. So it could be interesting to see what people think and we can talk about it. So I was thinking maybe we could start with each of us giving one that we thought before, like one assumption we had before we started started studying abroad. Do you want to? You're like, no. <laughs> Let me think. Do you have one already in your head? No. Okay, okay. Well, then let's go think. Okay, I have one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's going to be kind of funny, I feel like. Mm. So, <laughs> my... I'm even scared a little bit to say, but my oh, assumption <laughs> was that international students make friends super fast when they start the experience because I thought that like you're going to be like unique by like being the international student and like the locals will be like, oh, this is so cool and they're going to want to be friends with you. <laughs> That's such a funny, because I thought it was easier to make friends too, but not because of that. Yeah. Just because I think my idea was like Erasmus, where you have set like yeah. activities to do, where like you're all a bunch of people who don't have any friends, so you all gravitate towards each other and you have like certain activities planned. So that's why it's easier, which mm -hmm. obviously did not happen when we got here. We didn't even have like a welcome day or anything like that, <laughs> which might also have to do with COVID. I'm not sure, but we didn't mm -hmm. have anything like that. So yeah. that was my, like, why I had that assumption. But yours is an interesting <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it was because of my sister. Because when she went to the U.S., oh, you know, like, everybody adored her. Like, they were obsessed with her. She, she had so many friends. And, like, I could see it with my own eyes when I actually went there to visit her. And she had this whole, like, garden party. Were you a primary source? Yeah. <laughs> what we learned in research <laughs> methods um and i could see how they were just like really good friends and like that's she had good so point. many like so no, many you know that's true and even like guys were like everybody wanted her but i, I like, had wow. i've heard about that like from people who went to the u.s in high school mm -hmm. yeah it was high school yeah my sister i've heard about that but from nobody else. And somehow I didn't like transfer that think, idea. But I have heard about that. That's true. But I feel like it might be because they probably in high school. I think it's obviously more common to like have international students or Erasmus people in university. I and think not it as might much be in that. High school. Yeah. And especially the U.S., the big country where some Americans like don't even leave their state or their country. So maybe it's like interesting to them, like to see people from Europe who've like, they've never met that nationality before. And it's also more maybe unique because they got 
one or two students like that so. maybe a year or i mean maybe more maybe less i don't know but you know maybe yeah. it's like more special because here i mean there's a bunch of students from everywhere you have erasmus students coming in, you have students from the u.s coming in for a semester so i feel like it's more common so that might be it honestly yeah i yeah. never thought about that yeah so what's yours okay. so i think my assumption was that it was a lot more difficult um to study to go and study full-time abroad now let me preface this by <laughs> saying obviously like we're from europe and we're from the quote-unquote eu so since it's not the eu but they have a lot of the same contracts with with eu countries we're in schengen so it is um easier for us than somebody who would mm -hmm. come to europe to study from a country that's not in the eu obviously but even like knowing all of that knowing that i was in the eu and that we had the schengen agreement so that we were technically allowed like the free movement you know in between the countries i still thought it was going to be more difficult to get into like a university because as an international student like i thought there would be a whole completely different like process to get in for international students and like you would have to do so much more i thought we would have to do more paperwork when we mm -hmm. got here obviously the paperwork that we had to do killed me so thank god we didn't have to do more paperwork <laughs> but i thought there would be a lot like many more hurdles to be able to study abroad which is also i feel like part of the reason why i always thought it was such like an unattainable dream because it was like oh no i'm gonna have to get like sign multiple papers like there's so many forms that i'm gonna have to fill out to get into the country to get into the university but in the end also obviously thanks to schengen and everything it wasn't that difficult so i feel like that's one of my false assumptions yeah i mean i guess maybe it makes sense because for you since switzerland is an eu like yeah it has no agreements and stuff but maybe still you had the feeling that it's going to be more difficult because of that yeah and i also just feel like misinterpreted what schengen meant i feel like i didn't okay. realize that like i felt like it would make it easier but i still felt like they could kick me out If that makes sense. Out of the country? I still felt like they could be like, no, you can't come. Yeah. But then my dad was like, when I went to get like my Nia, like my Spanish ID, but I was like, I was so scared. I was like, do I have everything? What if they don't like me? What if they like dismiss this? And he was like, you know, they can't really tell you no. Yeah. Like they're going to give you the ID. And I, I just think I didn't know what Schengen meant exactly. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. All right. Let's move on to our followers assumptions. Okay, let's start off strong with, <laughs> you don't like your home country. <laughs> um, for me, that is absolutely false. You? No, for, I think it's false, right? Yeah, for me, it's false, too. I think it did, like, the opposite for me, where, I mean, I was annoyed. Maybe now I understand where this assumption comes from, because maybe it's because we didn't like our countries that's why we went to study abroad to like escape it which for me actually is partially true where i was like annoyed with the personality of the of, of the nation of the people and how everything works there and i just needed like a change and to be able to experience something else but then after coming here you like start missing things and maybe something annoys you here so then you realize that you actually like it better at home and like you're grateful for, for having that so for me it just like strengthened the relationship with my country yeah i feel like for me there were certain things that i didn't like about switzerland mostly culturally mm -hmm. which is why i wanted to leave but i mean a large part of it was also just i wanted to experience like a different culture not necessarily a better one but just like a different one and experience living in a different country meeting different people not necessarily better but i feel like There's certainly things I dislike about Switzerland that I like prefer the way they are in Spain, also vice versa. But I feel like it did highlight a lot of things for me that I do love about Switzerland, which I feel like always happens when you move abroad. Yeah. Um, there's like I appreciate certain things a lot more where also I've realized a lot of aspects of Switzerland that we could improve. You know, like I feel like I I I've realized like I there's a lot of things in Spain that I love which I didn't realize we could improve in Switzerland until I left, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. 
also the nature, like the country itself, the nature. I never understood when people were like, oh my God, Switzerland is so beautiful. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? Like, I never understood it at all. Because you're so used to it. Like people, like my, I don't know, my family from the US would come to visit and be like, oh my God, these mountains. And I was like, it's just a mountain. It's just rocks. <laughs> like, who, who cares? But now like being here, like I, I, I sent you reels from mm-hmm. Switzerland. I was like, I need to see a mountain. <laughs> I need to see a lake. Like, I appreciate it a lot more, definitely. I mean, I still would love to experience or, like, love the city of Prague more. Because I don't, I'm not as obsessed as everybody who lives in Prague. Yeah, where they're like, great things Prague about is the Prague. beautiful, most beautiful city in Europe and whatever. I'm like, I don't see it. I mean, I think for me, it just ruins because like, for me, it's home. And then it just annoys me, like the amount of people and tourists, which I mean, technically, technically, I'm a tourist here too when I go to the center, you know? So like, it's just because we feel it differently because we're in a different country. But like back home, it just annoys me. I'm like, I don't have time for this. I can't deal with like so many people. But to be honest, when I like take the train to the main Prague station and like we go around the city, it is beautiful. So I just want to maybe like change my mindset a little bit and maybe even well i don't have time for it this summer because i already have (laughs) too many things but maybe you know to just go and walk around because i've never done that before i've never walked in the city because you always have things to do no yeah Yeah, you're going about your life you just don't think about doing that in your home yeah to just like walk around and explore yeah no that's a thing that i would love to do this summer it's just kind of like go through switzerland as a tourist as Mm -hmm. much as i can because I don't have the money to like go to all the touristy yeah. places, but at least like within my hometown to like yeah. appreciate, like go on walks, go on hikes, you know, mm-hmm. within, within the, yeah, the surroundings of my hometown, mm-hmm. I guess. Okay. So no, we don't, we don't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> only, only, we only dislike certain aspects. You want to choose one? Sure. Ooh, I love this one. So this one says international students are more advanced than regular students. This is so interesting. How in could, what sense? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it's so... Like, where did that come from, you know? I would have never thought of that. No. But what I, I mean, what it makes me think about is that we might, might, I'm not saying we are, and I'm not saying even like us, but other like international students as well. And it might be that we have maybe better grades or we seem more motivated or invested because we know we can't fail. At least like for me, I know that I can't fail because if I do, it has like huge consequences for me. It means that either I would have to stay here longer or I would have to come back to retake the exam. You know, it's not oh, like in we terms live of here. Like- passing the exam the first time around so you don't have to come to the retake exam and so i don't want to fail anything i'm really like invested and especially in the beginning like in the first year i was like this is literally why i came here now that mindset changed a little bit because now i don't i have friends and i have some other activities that i hear that i do here and also i see my personal growth apart from like university so I know I'm here for other reasons but like in the beginning I was like I'm here for the university so I have to make it worth I have to be good you know so maybe because of that we put a little bit more effort because you know we feel this like kind of external motivation I don't remember what it's called yeah so maybe I don't know if the person meant it like that maybe but but I don't think we're more advanced in terms of intelligence, like, yeah, exactly. no. education, anything, anything like I that. I mean, again, maybe what some people could be is that like people who like travel or because we took such a huge step out of our comfort zones, maybe within like our personal growth in this sense, we might be a little bit more somewhere else. But like other people could be like advanced than us in other things, you know, so it's not like we are better than them or something and absolutely not mm, you know what like I mean? had to had to learn to cope a little bit yeah. by like move like yeah. living alone yeah. living in a foreign yeah. country but with that i'm not saying that like people who live here don't have that like don't have these skills or something you know no not at all it can come yeah. from any circumstance i exactly. feel like exactly that international students are always hanging out in the groups of their country slash language well <laughs> 
No, because we're not from the same country. Well, the thing with this is we're answering these from like our own perspective. And like we don't have a huge like international student community around us. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's difficult to say what the average international student does. For us, no. I mean, I haven't found a single human being. But I think if... I feel like if in our class we had, like, two Czech people and two people from Switzerland... We would. I feel like we would have. Especially in the beginning. Maybe, yeah, like, yeah. after a certain time. Like, if, you, if you're not necessarily the same type of person or whatever, with time you would maybe grow apart. But in the beginning, I feel like if I'd heard, oh, there's another Swiss person also German speaking, yeah. I would have gone yeah. and talked to that person immediately. Because we talked about this in some other episode. I can't remember which one. But you do gravitate towards the people that have some... Similar experience, background. Yeah, something. I mean, that's why story. we started talking in the beginning. Because mm -hmm. we were exactly. the only, like, non-Spanish mother tongue yeah. international students. And I mean, we do see it in our class where we have a couple of girls from Venezuela... And I, I, I mean, some of them even have like family members here. I don't really know their whole history and like background, but they did basically become a group. And I think from the outsider's perspective, initially based on the fact that they're all from Venezuela. Yeah, I feel like that happens in the beginning. And then if you don't get along at all, you'll yeah, like yeah. grow apart. But in the beginning, you'll like bond over that. Yeah common aspect and i mean again we sit with like u.s students like erasmus students yeah. or it's not erasmus but exchange students from the u.s they do they form these huge groups like i see that a lot in our university to be honest yeah or when i went to valencia to visit my friend there's a lot of germans and they also create this like huge group of students and they hang out all the time and do activities so i think it's true it happens yeah it makes sense yeah You live in the moment more so than you would at home and don't worry much about the future. See, this one this one is, is complicated for me <laughs> because I do feel like at this point in my life, I'm more focused, like I've stopped worrying about the future much. I've started like living more in the moment, but I don't necessarily think that has to do with me living abroad. I think that just has to do with me growing as a person mm -hmm. and learning from life and learning that there's no use in stressing about the future that much because I do remember like in high school being like terrified about what am I gonna do my job I need to have a career figured out I need to have this figured out where now I'm just kind of like ah oh, you just always do the next thing mm -hmm. and things will come about and I appreciate like and I try to focus more on the semester that I'm living here the time that I'm living here but I don't necessarily think that that's like a characteristic of an international student I mean, from my experience, I would say yes, but when I go home over the summer, you know, because you then, revert back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, I just live in the moment. I mean, again, maybe it was very specific because oh, last you year, don't revert back. You live more in the moment when you're at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the summer, yeah. Um, because I just, you know, you know, you're done with that year with school you have three months of vacation, like you can do stuff. And especially last year, I didn't have a lot of like plans. So then I would just be living in the moment, doing random stuff whenever mm -hmm. they would come up. Um, but here, I don't know. I mean, I do worry about the future kind of a lot, I would say. I don't <laughs> okay, know. so very inaccurate, very <laughs> inaccurate. Yeah. I don't much, but I don't think it has to do with me living abroad. I think it has to do with me realizing that there's no use and it's going to be fine. Yeah. I mean, these are kind of, I feel like, two summer ones, which you can package in one, mm -hmm. which is international students care more about social life than school, and Erasmus students most of the time feel like they don't care about a single thing. <laughs> I mean, this is, we have to separate, like, international students yeah, and Erasmus yeah. students, because as our brand says, basically, <laughs> <laughs> um, like, we always say it's completely different. I yeah. mean, we aren't... We haven't been Erasmus students No, yet. we will, never... just to, you know, we do will. the scientific Next experiment year. completely. We will do that. And then we can compare, I guess. Exactly. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we're doing 100%. it. 100%. <laughs> um, For research. But 
like it has happened to us a lot where we have an Erasmus students in our group, like for a group project, and they're just, they never go to class. They, they're always traveling when you need yeah, them. They don't engage in, in the activities. They have, there have been a couple who are like really invested, yeah. which was great. Yeah. But most of the time, it's, it's a bit of a, a struggle good. to get them to like participate and do yeah. their part. Because, I mean, I guess for them, it's like that. It's like a once-in-a-lifetime experience of them living in a foreign country, especially if they're from the U.S. I feel mm. like they like, they obviously, they're in Europe, so they want to travel as much as possible because they're so close to so many different countries. And I understand that. It's just from the perspective of us, it's a little bit difficult to, you know, mm -hmm. do the work we need to do for the yeah. group project. So I feel like we, from like an outsider's perspective, we have seen that a lot in Erasmus students and exchange students that are only here for a semester us i don't think we care more i would say maybe like in general with international students i think in the beginning you have this like sense of trying to immerse in the culture because like you're in this country and you don't want to be the outsider forever because you will be here for four years sometime exactly so i think in the beginning there is this sense of like getting to know the culture and trying to like integrate and maybe do a couple of and prioritizing that over university because i don't that, think i so. wouldn't say i wouldn't say that you prioritize no it over university. i feel like you tried to get a good balance yeah. yeah and i feel like we have a pretty good balance except for now but generally mm -hmm. we have a pretty good balance but i don't think Like, both things are equally as important to me. Like, yeah. it is important to me to get this degree, to get this education, mm -hmm. um, to make the most out of this opportunity. But it's also important for me to, like, be able to look at these, back at these four years and be like, okay, I, I what experienced Spain, I experienced the culture, I made the most out of my time here, too. So I feel like it's just, which is difficult at times to kind of find that balance. But I don't think there's ever, like, a priority. No. <laughs> This one is funny and kind of interesting. It says, <laughs> people are either very rich and partying or poor. <laughs> I love the, <laughs> the connection of partying to rich. Right? I mean, I heard I mean, it. Where did I hear true. it? I don't know. I think it was also because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. Hey. And I think... Um, That I, they, somebody said that, like, if you're partying, like, it costs a lot of money because, I mean, I drinks, mean, it's true. entry fees, whatever. So, I mean, I understand the connection. But I don't think, I think there can be many levels. Because, like, I'm not necessarily extremely poor, but I'm not rich at all. So, I feel like there is a way to, like, have this balance and, like, be able to enjoy doing things. But still be able to afford food. And not bankrupt because you're doing like your party. I mean, we don't go party a lot. So, <laughs> you know, we're saving money right there. Yeah. I feel like there is a stereotype, though, that international students are rich. Yeah, which is not true at all. Trust me. <laughs> no. But the thing is, I don't know. It does cost money to move to a foreign country. For sure. I mean, like I wouldn't underestimate that. Like I not anybody would be able to do it. Yeah, like there is like a yeah. privilege in being able yeah, to move sure. to a foreign country and like for create sure. a life for yourself yeah. and your parents maybe having to pay for an extra apartment because like at home you would live in their apartment yeah. now they have to pay for an extra apartment. Yeah. So there is like a privilege in that and to a certain extent I feel like you do have to have a certain amount of money to be able to do it. Yeah. I mean that's why I always said I'm super grateful for For my parents, because yeah. like they helped me so much. I mean, in the beginning, they still somehow support me, even though I am able to like support myself more now financially. But like without them, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So for sure, it is a privilege. Yeah. And like I am aware and I'm super grateful that I can be here. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, but like you said, like it does cost money because. All of a sudden, like you go to another country. And I would say the biggest like spending, what is it called? Spending category or something yeah. is like flights. Yeah. Because you do them more often than you would like. And yeah, I mean, that's a big spending that you have to make every couple of months. 
And like for us, it's home. one thing, but also you might live even further away. Exactly. You know? Like for us, at least, like it's not that far away. Like but we I can take the imagine. cheap airlines. We can take yeah. Easy Chat, yeah. Ryanair, try yeah. our best. But I can't imagine living in like Australia, the US, or Asia. Yeah. And like, if you want to go, I think I remember somebody commented on my re- on our reel um, a couple of months ago where they said that they can't go home often because they live far away yeah. and like it costs a lot of money um and it's time consuming so like for example over christmas they can't go home which i am so grateful and happy that i can mm-hmm. because it makes a huge difference yeah it makes a super huge difference so even though we don't go home during the semester it's still amazing that we can go like over christmas over summer yeah that we don't need like two months time to make it worth it you know yeah so maybe some yeah. international students don't go home over Christmas yeah. and summer and stay maybe the full four years, you know? And, like, they're happy if somebody comes v- visit them once or something. So, yeah. I mean, money is definitely involved. Mm-hmm. Like, it definitely is a question. Yeah. But I don't think you need to be... At least with us, like, being from Europe, studying in another exactly. European country, it is doable um, without having millions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well then we have i guess assumptions connected directly to us not mm-hmm. the international student in general which one is you would never live full-time in spain i feel like for me it is true i don't know i mean i always say that but i feel it's more like for me in general where i can't see myself living in another country wherever it is mm-hmm. because that's not where my parents are that's not mm-hmm. where my extended family is and my closest friend so that's for me like this general topic where I don't know if I could do like full-time because I feel like even like if we were talking about money like even if you're rich and you can like afford to go wherever you want wherever you can but the problem is like work your job your obligations won't permit you to do that you know because it's like traveling is time consuming and not in a sense now i don't mean like going on a vacation or a trip somewhere but i mean the traveling in the literal sense where you're going from place to place Mm -hmm. and you have to like plan it especially like if you have a family and kids you know like it's way it's not just about the money at that point i mean if you can even afford it you know i mean we were talking about that the other week i feel like where we were saying like living in spain with a job and not being like an international student is so different because now we get a month off over Christmas. We get three months off over the summer. So we can, it makes sense to go home for just three months. Like we literally spend a third of our year, more or less still in our home countries. When you have a job, you get, I don't know, four weeks off per year. Like that's a big difference. And that doesn't mean that, and then you probably can't organize it so that you can spend all those four weeks then in your home country so like it's a whole different situation Mm -hmm. for me i feel like i could picture i could picture doing it i feel like it would be hard for sure but i could picture it i feel like for me it's also a bit different because like wherever i am i'm gonna miss family if that makes sense because i feel like i kind of grew up with family in two different countries Mm -hmm. anyway so it was more normal for me to have like all of my dad's family in the u.s so when I'm in Switzerland, I'm missing them. When I'm in Switzerland, I'm missing my dad because he's here. When I'm here, I'm missing my mom and yeah. that whole family when I'm there. So it's like wherever I am, you know, mm-hmm. it's I'm going to miss somebody. Mm-hmm. But it would for sure be a challenge, I feel like. But I could I could see it happening. I mean, we don't have a lot of time to talk about that. But I ask, you know, remember last year when we used to do like a question at the end of an episode? Mm-hmm. I ask you if you were planning or you think you were gonna stay here and you were kind of set on staying like how do you feel about it now was i set on staying i i the thing is like somewhere in spain maybe not necessarily yeah or something but i think you were saying in spain i feel like i'll stay wherever i see like opportunity for work for a life i don't think it necessarily depends on the country i would not love to move to another country again Mm -hmm. i feel like necessarily but i could stay it depends on jobs it depends on that yeah okay 
Okay, one last one, which says you never fight, which we kind of touched on yeah. in the last episode where we talked about living together. But I mean, as we said, it's not necessarily like big fights in the traditional sense where we just scream at each other. But like it did happen to us a couple of times where we were annoyed or something happened and we were frustrated. But we never like got into conflict in between each other. No. We would just like go, like we would deal with it in our heads, and then we would like meet and be like, okay, let's talk about it and resolve. Yeah. It. Like we obviously like we have miscommunications. We yeah. have stuff that like would bother the other person or whatever, small situations. Um, but it was never like it never blew up or it was never like that. We wouldn't speak for a while or whatever. Like we would just talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. (laughs) There we go. Book club. Wow, that was so (laughs) exciting. Did you read? (laughs) I started a new one. But Did you I finish didn't the last, finish the last Lauren, not again. Oh my, I'm currently reading three books. Three but because books? it was a more like a more um what do you call it? A yeah, more yeah, I come up with that excuse. <laughs> more, like simple read, quote unquote. It wasn't as like heavy as the other ones I was reading and mm-hmm. I felt for like exams and everything. I was never gonna be able to push myself to read the other books because the way they were written, the content and everything was more heavy and more complex. So mm-hmm. I I started a new one. <laughs> I started a new one that was more like a lighthearted and I have been reading. Oh, that's so, amazing. Yeah. So I started Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Read. And the fact that I can keep starting a new book just shows how many freaking books I have bought but never started. That's true. Um, I started that one. And I love it so far. To be fair, content, not that much lighter. <laughs> oh. Because it's about, I can say this, it happens within mm-hmm. the first two pages. Um, a woman, she just got married within, I want to say, a week of her being married, her husband dies. Mm -hmm. And then it's just basically her dealing with the consequences of that. She also meets his mother, her mother-in-law, who she never met before because her husband never, like, introduced them. Her The mother didn't even know they got married, so there's conflict between the two of them. And they're both obviously, like, grieving. They're both in pain. But at the same time, they both kind of are in conflict. And it's just them dealing with that and it jumps back and forth between because you start a book he dies you know nothing about their relationship okay so it jumps back and forth a chapter of them like getting to know each other like the path leading up to their wedding and then the chapter the next chapter is her like dealing with the consequences of his death so it's super interesting very well written um yeah so far i'm enjoying it so that's what i'm that's what i'm doing i started a new book i can't remember the last one I read was The Catcher in the Right, right? Yeah. The one before, which I finished um, long ago. Um, and I was thinking about starting a new book, but I wasn't sure because I was like... Oh, I, that's true. You were on the fence. Yeah, because very little time left here. I don't know why my thinking was like, I shouldn't start a book where I don't finish it and then I have to I don't to know. Go I home. was a little confused right? by that, I don't understand honest. that logic because I'll just take the book <laughs> home. I don't, I don't know. Mm. But now more of what issue I see is that I don't have, like, time to read. I don't, which technically is not true. I think I'm just so focused on exams and studying. And maybe it's even because we read a lot during the day, but, like, yeah. notes and presentations. And maybe that's why I don't have a lot of excitement to read a book then. You no, know? it makes sense. Yeah. And I started a new book, which I th- read, like, five pages. I can't remember. I think it says to... My daughter's... This one? Should I get it? <laughs> what is it? Things I want my daughters to know. Yes. Ooh, okay. Things I want my daughters to know. And it's a book that we found with my mom in Malaga in this beautiful, beautiful, like, charity secondhand store. And they had everything. I wish there would be a store like this here because they had books, shoes, 
bags. Oh, I record, love those vinyl types records, of stores. Um, games, um, everything, everything. And my mom found this and she was like, I have this in Czech, like in Czech translation. And I read it and I liked it. And she wanted to buy it to maybe like read it over the summer in English to try because I don't think she's used to reading like she can speak English because like at work and everything but I think with reading she haven't gotten around to it and she was like I want to like read it in English since I already know what happened and stuff like that but she gave it to me obviously because she <laughs> couldn't transport it herself because her back was already twice as big as it should have been because um, she already came to Malaga with it super full and then she bought things you know Goodness. it was a whole thing um so I was like, yeah, let's start reading it. And I, I don't even remember because I started it like I think a week ago. I read one night and then I never read yeah. again. I'm literally right in the beginning. I'm like page six. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what's happening yet. But I, I, I have to say I kind of lost the spark of joy for reading. Me too. I'm a bit in a, in a what's it called? A reading. I want to say dump. Slump. Ah. <laughs> You guys know what I mean. <laughs> it's like, I'm like not a reading well. block for yeah. me. Yeah. As like a writing block. I of have course. a reading block. I mean, writing block as well because I haven't written anything in months. Yeah. But me too. that is okay. You know, I even stopped writing poetry and I don't know why. Maybe it's just because there's so much. There's so much going on. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So. Yeah. That sounds great. But. I want to read a lot in the summer, as I said. So Yeah, she wants to do one hour per day. <laughs> I mean, that is very unrealistic at this point. I mean, to be fair, when I go to the if internship... If you commute. Exactly, when I'm going to be cumulating. Cumulating? Commuting. I always I read a lot during, when I was commuting, that's I true. used to read a lot when I yeah. went to high school, and I would yeah. commute an hour, like two hours technically Same. a day. Yeah. So that was amazing. So we're going to get into that again. Yeah. Hopefully. And then in terms of watching, we watched a movie. Ooh, I forgot. What we is it? Monsters, Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Which, I mean. What did you think? Is it was your first time watching it, yeah, right? Yeah, I loved it. I Aww. loved it. I'd seen a bunch of clips on like social media. I feel like there's always, I don't know, the girl I've seen in many places. I feel Maybe like different. She, I mean, the guy selling the red. Him too. He's a meme. Yeah, but. and the little girl I've seen in like TikToks and stuff too. Yeah. But I never knew. Like I never questioned where mm-hmm. it was from. But I loved that movie. I feel like it was. It was, it was really, really funny too, mm-hmm. which I wasn't expecting. <laughs> you told me it was going to be sad, but it was a good. It was it a was good less amount sad of sad. Than yeah. I, than I remember. I was worried. I was worried the entire time. I was like, "What's going to happen?" <laughs> yeah, because we. <laughs> It's kind of funny how I remember this movie. Um, we were studying for research, right? And there was this guy, or was it? No, newspaper, newspaper design. Sullivan. Something Henry. Louis Henry Louis Sullivan. Louis Henry Sullivan. I don't what re- did he say? Form, Form follows, follows function. function. Was that him? Yeah, that was no, him. I don't remember. See, like we had that exam a couple of days ago. I don't remember, remember anymore. But... Then I was, I kept calling him like Sully and then I was like, oh, the movie. And I was like, we have to watch it because I haven't seen it in forever. Lauren said she hasn't watched it. So we did. And it was great. Yeah. Loved it. I was also, I watched a new season of Selling Sunset, but I'm not even going to go into oh, right, the whole thing. Right, right. Because, I mean, I have to say, I I feel like it got really bad in a sense of like quality of content. I feel like I don't I can't believe that this is like the real life. I don't think I feel like it can be true that all of what they're like fighting about is real because I mean if it is, then these women are crazy and petty and I just I just don't understand it. I so, mean, I've never seen it before, but it seemed super weird. But I feel like now it did turn into like the classic like reality show where it's all about drama and fights. Whereas in the beginning, it was about real estate and these beautiful homes, expensive yeah. homes. But to me, like I've never seen it before. I just saw like some clips as Christina was eating or whatever. She was watching it and it seemed very scripted to me. Like then she explained to me that it was like a reality TV show or whatever, kind of documenting this mm-hmm. business, I guess. But to me, it seemed like one of those like fake documentaries. 
I don't remember what they're called. Mockumentaries. Mockumentaries. Honestly, it was weird. But I can't remember if, because now they are doing it as like a proper reality show where they like even sit them down and do, it's called something. It uh, They use it in Love is Blind. Like when, confessionary? Oh, uh, yeah, when they talk to the camera. Yeah. But I can't remember if they did it in like the first or second season. I'm going to have to watch some clips back. To see if they even did it in that way or they just literally like followed them around because that that's what I felt like they were doing before. But now it's like a proper there's not even like most of them don't even seem work that they're working, you know, because they yeah. don't show it on camera. Yeah. And I just, just don't understand how somebody can have so much drama. Also, in the their color life. grading. That is I feel like there once there went something wrong. Yeah, something because went wrong. It's really I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that. So oh, there was uh, there was my socks. Now that I look at it, are they? I thought I, I stole them from my sister when I was there in January. I think they're mine. <laughs> oh no, then I made them pink. It's fine. I okay. Don't care. I even forgot. That I had no idea. But now that I look at it, I, like, ah, I knew they weren't mine. But I thought I just took them with me from my sister. I will give them back. It's okay. <laughs> Oh my god. Um yeah. Song of the Week. Let's go. Song of the Week. Yes. My song of the week. Oh, I forgot. I need <laughs> you tell Spotify. them your song of the week. Okay, mine is El Mismo Bar, but I need to in- interpret the artist because I don't know who they are. There it's three people, I think. H Roto and Garci. I don't know. I don't know these people. <laughs> but this song popped up on my Instagram. I mean, now I see it like three times a day on my Instagram, and I love it. it actually, has such... oh, was it the one you played? <laughs> oh my god, was it the one you played for me? Yeah, no, oh. yeah. I've never seen that on Instagram. I have, and now I'm obsessed. It has such a like great rhythm, and and I love it. I love it. So, what is yours? I have so many. This has been a really good music month, I should say, because first of all, people are. Putting out albums left and right, which mm-hmm. I really appreciate. <laughs> and then I also discovered a bunch of new ones. But I would say maybe my sister went to a Sam Smith concert the other oh, week. You don't even remind me. Um, if I had to choose one for right now, I would say maybe Kids Again. Kids Again by Sam Smith. I love it. Okay. Um, yeah. But I was going to say one thing, which I started doing recently, to actually like listen to a complete... Albums, albums mm. which I never used to do that before. I used to do it always the first time that I listened to it because my dad would always get really mad. Like, my dad is very <laughs> passionate about this. So, like, the first time an album would come out, I would always listen to it in the right order. Because it does make, like, there's a reason the songs yeah. are the way they are on the album, you know? It is. Especially today, I was re-listening to Dom Odell. I can't remember what it's called. The album? Yeah, but I think it's the newest one. I can't remember what it's called. It has a blue, blue photo of the album, if that helps. Um, and it makes so, like, that one specifically, I feel like you can really tell, like, why the order mm-hmm. is in the way. And, like, if you're listening to it like that, it makes so much sense. Um, but I never used to do that, like, to listen to a whole album. I think and one thing that plays a role here is that if a new album album comes out for me it's a problem because <laughs> i save songs like into my like, monthly playlist well no like by default it saves it into like songs you like right oh true and then i can't i don't want it to be like whole like albums i want their the songs to be like different and have mm. a different like photo and stuff so then i'm always like what do i do what do i do what if i like all of the songs because then sometimes i just saw, save like a couple and like mix with other songs because i don't save them like immediately and i don't want to download the albums because then i don't have space for them <laughs> in my phone but sometimes i just do like the heart so i i have them in my library but not downloaded but it's a huge issue so i think that's why i never like listen to the whole albums and also because now I'm like more of it invested with like actual artists and like their story and and like I'm Wait, excited. Wait, you never listened to a whole album? Like it's not that I wouldn't hear the songs, but I didn't like go to the artist to the album and play it like that. I think That's now it's crazy. because like I know when artists are putting out new music and like I'm excited, you know, with Ed Sheeran, 
Shirian, sorry, Shirian. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> we know and love him. <laughs> NF, Luis Capaldi, where I literally go and like listen to it in order and all. Wait, of but songs. what would you do if, as a child, you bought the CD? I never bought a CD. I don't think. Oh, oh. <laughs> I do. We okay, just had a Crazy okay. Frog CD that we listened to on our radio. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Okay, get it, get it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm. So, also mm-hmm. for the song of the week, week. <laughs> that was a struggle. <laughs> I lost again. I was. It was very. I was. I. She thought almost I was won. Win. Yeah, and then the last couple of. But Taylor Swift Minutes, always. I, I mean, that is a hard one to <laughs> beat in this world. But you did well. Thank you. Especially considering the song was checked. Yeah. So the songs were Never Grow Up by Taylor Swift and... <laughs> Usenebdam by Dorian. Well, yes. I hope this is the right guy. And it was 53 for the Taylor Swift song versus 47 for the Very Dorian song. Mm-hmm. So, and it was a really, it was a head-to-head race. But I won, which means I have to come up with something. And what I came up with, well, Christina came up with it for herself. What we're going to do is also because we're running out of time with this mm-hmm. episode. Christina's like, yes. <laughs> is I'm going to send Christina a list with um, six songs okay. on it. And you can listen to all of them. And then you give us feedback on okay. the next episode. Okay. I hope it's not all Taylor Swift. You no, know no, what? I'm going to do a mix. I was listening to her last week, like for an hour at least. Because mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I have to see what these girls <laughs> see in her. And so I listened to it. I didn't hate it. I mean, after like an hour or two, I had to turn it up. I was like, that's enough for me. I don't know. I just wow, can't. progress. What were you listening to? I don't know. All of them. Just like, like a, a mixed mix playlist. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, I like some of the songs. I just, I'm not obsessed. Do yet. you care about lyrics a lot with music? It depends. But because I feel, I feel like, like with her, that's the key. Yeah, because I care about lyrics a lot. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's people who care more about instrumentals. The lyrics are just like secondary, whatever. I love lyrics. I I will analyze the hell out of it. Like, I love it a lot. And I feel like that's the key with Taylor Swift. I think so. I, I said this yesterday when you showed me like the lyrics of her new song. And then we listened to, like, somebody posted it on TikTok. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it sounds cool. But, like, if I heard it and didn't listen to the lyrics, I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to save this one Mm. and listen to it again. So I think, I guess, with her, it's like you really have to listen to the lyrics. And, yeah, I don't do that all the time. So Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I'll give you six songs. Next time you can hear what she thinks about it. Okay. And I think that's that. We've uh, been talking for an hour. An hour and eight minutes. Yeah. So next week. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to get in touch, you can find all of our information in the description below. 